is, uh, is the chapter four of the Cosmos, uh, Cosmos series by Carl Sagan, that was, was Heaven and Hell. And, come on, okay. And, and in this, in this uh, wonderful uh, uh, chapter, uh, Carl Sagan talks about the, the impact of, of comets and asteroids. In fact, this was a chapter on, on the possibilities to, to transform our heaven earth in a hell. And, and uh, the way is that some astronomical uh, or astronomical related events <clears throat> can do it. One of them is the, the impacts on Earth. And he, he talked about the Tunguska event, uh, also about the impacts on the moon and what we can learn from uh, the craters on Earth, moon and the terrestrial planets. He also talked about v Venus and its uh, crazy atmosphere and the huge greenhouse event uh, on it uh, that, uh, and, and uh, how, we, uh, how did ca this can happen and what we can learn about the greenhouse event to prevent to, to, uh, this to happen on Earth, and also how the human activity uh, affects the climate change. And what we are interested basically in the, in the asteroids and, and comets, uh, uh, Carl Sagan talked about the impact on, on the impact event happened in Tunguska in 1908. Uh, in June 30, 1908, uh, a very bright uh, column of light, very blue light, uh, was visible in, in Siberia, and and also was visible in many places in the world, including including Europe. Um, is, is this this column of light was uh, brilliant as, as the sun, and crosses the sky the sky at a very very high velocity. Uh, uh, after the, after the light. A, a huge explosion uh, produced uh, a, a big effect on, on the on the tree forest that uh, that was in, in in the place where the, the event happened. About 80 million of trees in a 2,000 square kilometer area <clears throat> were destroyed. Uh, fortunately, it's, it's an unpopulated region, and there are only three non-confirmed dead persons. But uh, but. If this ha happened in a, in a populated region, of course, this would be a catastrophe uh, of, uh, with thousands of, of deaths, right? Uh, the hypothesis that, uh, that, that was most, most uh, reliable in the epoch of cosmos was that the, co the, 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 the cause of the, of the event was the impact of a, of a piece, of a fragment of a comet, probably Enki comets. In, 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 the, in the chapter, uh, Carl Sagan showed an, in, a very interesting uh, uh, details of, of the Kulik uh, expedition that happened in 1921, a lot of years after the event, and, and, and give support to the comet hypothesis. We will see that that has changed in time. Maybe time. He'd also talk about the impact craters on Earth. Uh, and and the impact craters that we can see in terrestrial planets and the moon. And all these all these craters uh, uh, tells us about a, a history of impacts by small bodies on our planets, and in particular on our planet that has uh, had a strong um, effects in the evolution, in particular in the in the development the development of life on Earth. And also, it was very interesting because uh, Sagan speculated about the, the possibility of, on, of collisions on uh, gas, on, on our gas planets, and in particular on Jupiter. And uh, uh, he said, "Okay, they will leave, They will not leave a crater like uh, like in, in our planets because this is gas. It's an atmosphere. No, no rocky surface. But and it will make a momentary holes in the clouds, but." That could be. It. But it, it was interesting that this happened in, in 1994. 1994, we detected the impact of a train trail of comets, product of, of the disruption of a big one. Uh, the comet was called Shoemaker Levy 9. 
and this happened uh, in, in, in 1994. Uh, the comet was discovered uh, a, few, a few months before, and it was, this, it was disrupted in several pieces because of a very close approach to Jupiter in 1992, and the gravitational forces produced by the encounter were able to disrupt the structure of the, of the comet nucleus. The effects of, 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 uh, on Jupiter atmosphere remained during months. And uh, as you can see here in the picture, those are the, the black uh, structure here, and this structure that you can see in the ultraviolet here, uh, lasted during months and their study uh, uh, allowed us to learn a lot about the, the Jupiter atmospheres and, and the impact, the, the kind of impact events that, uh, that can happen. In this chapter, basically, what's interesting for us is that Sagan introduced the, the knowledge on comets and asteroids. That it, but the knowledge we have in the early 80s. Uh, and at this epoch, we have two categories of uh, small bodies, comets and asteroids, nothing else, right? And, and uh, the, what is it very interesting of this object is that there are the residuals of, of the building blocks that created the form of the planets. Uh, but but uh, many things uh, changed in our knowledge of the solar system and in, in particular of the small bodies since then. When uh, in the early 80s, the solar system was basically the sun, nine planets, about uh, 10,000 asteroids, most of them in a region between Mars and Jupiter called the main belt, a few tens of uh, periodic comets, small bodies that passed periodically close to the sun and develop the coma and tail we, we usually see in, in comets. And, and some new that are, were discovered every, every year, three, four discovered every year, that came from the outer part of the solar system in almost parabolic orbits. At this moment, we recognize the two fossil structures, the asteroid main belt, the ring between a ring of, uh, placed in a, with a ring shape between Mars and Jupiter and the Oort cloud. But today, this view has changed a lot. Since the 80s, start, we started to, to, to implement a lot of survey uh, programs to, to search for objects. In particular, we started searching for near asteroids. And this changed completely our view of the solar system. In fact, actually, we do not consider we have nine planets. For, for, uh, for us, we consider that there are eight planets and several smaller objects that we call dwarf planets. And this includes Pluto and Ceres, that Pluto was considered till uh, 2005. Uh, uh, a <clears throat> planet, but then uh, uh, it was not considered as a planet anymore. Uh, but we also known two orders of magnitude more asteroids. We have, we, we actually know one million, more than one million asteroids, most of them on the main belt, but not only in the main belt, all around the, the, the planetary, the, 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 the terrestrial planetary region, the, the region, region with the terrestrial planets. Now we know hundreds of periodic comets and tens, uh, tens of new comets uh, uh, in very extensive uh, eccentric orbit are discovered every year. But not only that, we know that there exist other populations of solar system uh, small bodies, like the trans Neptunian bodies, the centaurs, and some others that, uh, that uh, are smaller. But we also discovered that, that this uh, complete differentiated category of asteroids and comets are not that different. There exists uh, an intermediate category of, of objects that uh, moves in, comet in, in asteroidal orbits, but can have activity like comets. Uh, these are called the active asteroids or, or, uh, or main belt comets. And also we have comets that are not active at all and, and that we call dormant comets. Finally, we, we should add that we, the, we are observing the visit of interstellar objects, interstellar visitors, that one of them, uh, Oumuamua, uh, we 
I thought it's it's like an, uh, an asteroid. And then the other one that is called Borisov developed a clearly, uh, clearly cometary like activity. And actually, we added a, another fossil structure of small bodies, that is the trans-Neptunian belt. This is our present view of, this, of the solar system. Here, in the uh, interior, with the uh, Mercury, the orbit of Venus, uh, Earth, Mars, and Jupiter, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and Jupiter, you can, you can see in green all the main belt asteroids, in red the near Earth asteroids, and in blue here you can see other populations of asteroids called the Trojan asteroids. But outside, and in this case, this is inside here, this is Jupiter, Saturn, uh, Uranus, oops, sorry, Uranus and Neptune. There is another ring structure called the Transneptunian belt or the Kuiper belt or the Kuiper Edgeworth belt, populated by icy objects uh, like the comet. And the old, uh, the old cloud that it is, it's a, a, the, the biggest structure, the, the, one of the largest and the farthest, is, is a cloud of, of cometary like objects that's it involves evolved all, uh, in an spherical region all around uh, the sun at an interstellar region, uh, distance. Almost one uh, light year is uh, five, uh, 10 to the five astronomical units that is called the Oort cloud. This, this was known in the 80s, in fact, was uh, suggested in, the, in 19, uh, 1950 by Gene Oort, and this was already known also in the 80s. But this is an, the new structure and this is, uh, these are the, the two fossil structures populated by icy objects, and those are the region where comets come from. And, uh, and the main belt is the region of the rocky metal objects, basically. Let, let, me, let me introduce uh, uh, very rapidly something that uh, I, we, we will need to know <clears throat> for, to understand the, the, the next uh, slides. Uh, the, the object moves, we know, in conic orbits, particular dots are linked to the, to, to, to the solar system, moves in elliptical orbits. And uh, there are three parameters that define uh, the, these conics. Uh, that one is the semi-major axis, that it is, you have an ellipse. Uh, this is the semi-major axis. This is the largest axis, and the semi-major is the one half of this. The sun is, one, is in one of the focus and the object moves in the red trajectory. The, the eccentricity that is, is defined in the, uh, by this formula here, between the uh, same major axis and, and the uh, small axis, uh, <clears throat> is, uh, is a measurement of how circular or how elliptic is the orbit. The, uh, is, if the ellipticity is zero, we have a, a circular orbit. The larger the ellipticity up to one, the, we have very elliptic orbits or in one a parabolic, uh, parabolic orbit. If it is larger than one, you have hyperbolic orbits, right? And, and sorry, and the other important parameter is the inclination of the orbit. The, the, the orbital plane is inclined with respect to the ecliptic at the Earth's uh, orbit around the sun. And this, this parameter is called the inclination. There are two other three parameters that, that uh, tell us what is the orientation of the, of the, of the <clears throat> orbit in space, but for the, uh, what it follows, only we are interested only in the uh, semi-major axis and centricity and inclination. For example, this is the, uh, uh, a diagram with the semi-major axis here in a logarithmic scale, you know, one, 10, 100, it's not linear and against the eccentricity in this in uh, here. So here we have circular orbits, here, here we have parabolic orbits, and the larger this value, the more elong uh, elongated that the, the orbit is. And look, we have here the main belt in the region between Mars and Jupiter. Those are the planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, right? And this is the region where most of the asteroids are, but there are some objects in this region with a 
very elongated orbits that pass it very close to the terrestrial planets that goes inside the terrestrial planet region. Those are the nearer objects. We have uh, uh, one, one uh, group of objects that moves in the, in the, in the orbit of, of Jupiter that are the Trojans. The comets occupies a different space on, in all this region where it's easy to separate comets from asteroids. And then in the outer part, we have the Kuiper Bear or the Trinitonian Belt and the Centaurs. And if you look, the Centaurs also are very elliptical and move not with, be, between the, the terrestrial planet, but between the giant planets, right? And, and the fossil structures we see in the solar system, the asteroid belt, and, and the and the and the trans Neptunian belt are also visible in other stars. That's the, that is the case that uh, of uh, Epsilon and Eridani, that uh, has an interior asteroid belt and two rings of icy objects, two Kuiper belts, like uh, like ours. And this is related to the formation of the solar system. Everything is related to the formation of the solar system, and the study of this small bodies that are the building blocks of the planets, the less modified material in the solar system. And the study of the air evolution and the structures tells us a lot about the origin and evolution of the solar system. Basically, the planetary, the, the stars form from, uh, uh, from an interstellar cloud and these clouds start to collapse. And as soon as it collapses, it rotates faster and the material goes to a disk, concentrate in a disk. And things start to happen in the disk where dusty ice grains start to, to, to add uh, in, in, a in, in, in a process called the accretion. Uh, there are collisions at very low velocity and the, the, the particles start to glue one to the other and form larger, larger object that collides with other larger objects and form <coughs> even larger objects called planetesimals. And, and uh, this planetesimal accrete in very large object called planets. But there are some residual uh, objects of deformation, right? That remains in this region that are the, the, the fossil structure we discussed before. And this is happening. We are, we are looking at the formation of planets on other stars. Actually, this, uh, this is an image of HL Tauri star, the very young star with, with a, with a uh, disk of objects that are, you can see they are forming rings around the star where the planets are uh, uh, creating material. In the 80s, we, uh, they already know that there is an asteroid belt between <coughs> the Mars and Jupiter. We have also this concentration of, uh, of objects that moves in, in these two positions that are called the, the Lagrangian region L4 and L5 that goes 60 degrees uh, in one side and 60 degrees on the other side of Jupiter that moves with Jupiter. And also they identify a few uh, objects that come very close to the Earth that are, were called the nearer asteroids. In the 80s, uh, uh, the, uh, there, is, the, the, there is a huge interest in, in, in the nearer asteroid because of, of the risk they, they have for Earth. The impacts of the, the object that will impact are those that pass close by. So those are the objects to be studied to prevent uh, collisions with Earth. And uh, in this epoch, you can see here a histogram, the semi-major axis here. Oh, sorry, semi-major axis against the number of objects. You can see that there are only known about a few thousand objects. In this in this plot, there are about one thousand and four hundred objects. That, that, that are those with very well-known uh, orbits. But at this epoch, they, they also know that there is an, an, a main belt and some other population and Trojan, Ildas and Zivilis that are outside the, the orbit, the, uh, out in, in the outer part of, uh, very outer part of the main belt. And also they started some compositional studies. To start to study the composition of, of an asteroid, we take, uh, remotely take the spectrum in this epoch, uh, the, uh, the, the detector were not uh, very good. They used to they used to the photometers and, and narrow filters mostly to do this study. Only a few of asteroids uh, were observed in with the spectroscopy, and and using a photometry in, in different filters. Here you can see the wavelengths is duplicated from zero two to one and zero two to one again, 
And they noticed that, that they reflected the light of the sun. This is the ref relative reflectance after it reflected the light of the sun in different ways. And this signature of reflection uh, means, for, uh, means that, uh, that the composition of these objects is different. You know, uh, different materials reflect the lights in a different, the, the, the colors in, in, in a different way. And they recognize uh, two, two kinds of, of, of uh, asteroids. The stony ones that are those here that have this drop in the, in the red, in the uh, red to infrared uh, wavelengths, and these other that do not present this drop that they call carbonaceous. But this was the, what they know in, in 1980, 9,000 asteroids in the inner region. Again, we have here, I, I hope you can see here, uh, Mercury, Venus, Earth, uh, Mars, and Jupiter, right? But the, the discovery programs started to, to, to work and they discovered uh, a lot of objects. The white one are the one that are discovered every, uh, every date here. In, 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 and this, why are they observed always in, in, the, in this direction where you have the, the, the sun and the earth, right? It's just because the, the surveys observe in, in opposition, I mean, observe in the direction contrary to the sun. And they discover objects in this, in this part of the sky, right? If, if we go fast, we can see how many objects are discovered <clears throat> with time. This number is increasing a lot. This is 1995 and we started to discover even more objects, more and more objects. And here you can start to see a very dense uh, main belt and a lot of objects coming into this region. These are the nearer asteroid that moves inside the orbit uh, of the of the terrestrial planets, right? We can go faster and faster and uh, and come to the situation we have uh, now with uh, this uh, high amount of objects. Actually, so we know that we have nearer objects here. We have the main belt asteroid here, the Trojans here and a branch, a branch of uh, comets that are shown as, as a squares, blue squares coming into and moving in, in the terrestrial plant region. But we also know much more, much, much more about the structure of this, of this uh, main belt. Look, the, the objects are not distributed equally. There are gaps inside the belt. They are region with no objects. And here is the, uh, um, the heliocentric distance and the orbit inclination. You can see here is Jupiter, here is Earth, here is Mars, right? And the main belt can be divided, in fact, in three regions, the, either, the inner, the middle, and the outer, outer region. And there are some other groups of asteroids. And we also know, because of a spectroscopy, a thousands of objects have been obtained in a spectroscopy, not only in the visible, but in the near infrared and in the mid infrared, we are able to identify the kind of minerals that are there and we, we can map the composition of the belt actually and the mass of the belt <clears throat> uh, with a, a certain uh, grade of accuracy that was impossible in the 80s. But not only in remote observation, we visited a lot of asteroids, right? But okay, if you consider that we know 1 million, this is very few. And that's uh, that's what happened with it with the, with the space uh, space uh, research in 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 asteroids. In fact, uh, we had the advantage of being the only uh, astronomical uh, field that can test the hypothesis inside. Right? We can be uh, we can uh, uh, make hypotheses about the composition and the structure of an object, and then we can visit it. We cannot do it for other for other stars. We cannot do it for other galaxies. In this case, we rely on remote observing. But in in the case of of, of uh, solar system research, we have to be much more careful. We cannot lie that much as the others, <laughs> because uh, someone can go there and say, "Okay, Javier was wrong about what he said." Right. So uh, this is what we do. We, we can have extremely detailed 
information of a few objects that need to be uh, put in, in a big picture, also obtaining as much information remotely we, as we can of others. And one of the ways of, of, of studying the, the composition of, of asteroids is studying the meteorites, because the meteorites are chunks of asteroids that came to, uh, that, that hit on Earth. And, and we can have them in our hands. Uh, and and in, in, this, in this point, it is very important to understand uh, how it works. You have bodies that come, hit, enter into the atmosphere, produce an effect in the atmosphere, and some of them, a very few of them, uh, uh, come, to, uh, come to the surface of the Earth, arrive to the surface of the Earth, and are, uh, and are the meteorites. The body that arrived to the Earth is the meteorite. What happened in the, in the, in the atmosphere, the effects of the entrance of the body in the atmosphere is the meteor, and the body outside the atmosphere is the meteorite. Right, so meteoroid, meteor, meteorite. It's not the same thing, okay? But the meteorites are chunks of asteroids. And we know that there are at least three groups of, of meteorites. Rocky ones, sorry, should be rocky. Stony iron ones and iron. Most of the meteorites are rocky. Only a few are iron. But, uh, but uh, they're, they're the, 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 the most easy to find because uh, it's, it's those that uh, the iron is the, is the material that better uh, survive the, the entrance on, of, on the atmosphere. This is a, a streaming catastrophic event for the for the meteorite, for the meteorite. The meteorite that enter uh, suffer a lot of heat, a lot of strong forces, uh, explosions on the atmosphere, and so on. So only the strongly part of of, uh, of the meteorite survive the entrance to atmosphere, and the, and we recover it on the surface. And in the rocky cases, we have the achondrites, uh, that, and this is these bodies don't have what the chondrites uh, meteorites have, that are these chondrules, these structures that you can see here, because the achondrites basically are magmatic meteor, meteorites. Uh, meteorites that came from, from uh, some very processed material, uh, while the, the chondrites are, uh, uh, come from objects that are almost unprocessed, right? If you look at, at this object, you can see that, uh, that it is a, a, a group of, of uh, accumulated particles that the, uh, didn't, but that the structure of the original particle is almost there, right? Those are the most primitive uh, objects we know. This structure formed something like four, 3,000 million years ago, right? And the material we can, we can study here is the most primitive one. We can do spectroscopy, for example, of, of, of an asteroid, right? Uh, uh, and compare it with the spectra this, uh, of different kind of meteorites, right? So you can see the spectrum here, for example, the spectrum of an asteroid compared with the spectrum of one meteorite. And this tell us about the composition of the body. Also, we can compare with silicates we know on Earth and we see that uh, so some of these uh, rocky asteroids present in, in, the, in, the, in the visible and near, in near infrared region, a strong absorption band uh, due to some mineral like olivine, plagioclase, plagioclase and pyroxene. So taking the spectrum, we can derive the composition. And also when we study the meteorites and then, and also, when, when we compare with meteorites and, and retrieve information on, on, the, on the composition, we are able to go into the history of where, where this object came from. There, the, depending on the size and the mass of the object, uh, of, the, of the original parent body, the body can be differentiated, partially differentiated, or undifferentiated, right? Uh, if the body is very massive, the gravity will put a lot of pressure on the material, with, uh, the material will differentiate, the, 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 weight, uh, the, the more dense material go to the interior, the less dense to the outside part. There are a lot of magmatic process here with a, you have a nucleus, mat, uh, mantle and, and crust. And when you destroy this, total or partially, you can have different kind of uh, 
materials, depending on the, if it came from the, it was the interior of the asteroid, the, 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 crust, the, the mantle or the, or the crust. And if you have very primitive material, unprocessed, this should come from a very small object, right? Uh, uh, that with no gravitational forces enough to differentiate the body. So this study let, let, let knows about uh, the objects a lot. And this, this can be done because the asteroid collided during the, their history. The, the, the history of collisions uh, in, in the asteroid belt is, is very heavy, right? Most of the original parent, uh, bodies that populated the, the main belt uh, at the very beginning of the solar system are destroyed totally or partially. Only a few survive. The, maybe the largest than 100 kilometer object are original. All the others, that the large majority of them, are chunks that uh, of the of the collision uh, uh, that happened with the, uh, in the original uh, asteroid population. And depending on the energy, the collision can be complete, partial. Object can reaccumulate because you have. Uh, in a partial or, or complete collision, there are a lot of pieces that can be reaccumulated again uh, <clears throat> after, after the collision and form a kind of object that are known as, rub as rubble piles, right? right? Uh, the, 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 the pieces come together again, but without enough uh, gravitational force to, to, to be in a, in a, in a uh, strong structure. These are very porous objects. Or the, if the collision is not too high, can break uh, the internal structure, but not, de not destroy the, the asteroid. And there are a lot of evidence of collisions on the solar system. The first one of all uh, is that the, the existence of collisional families, groups of objects that shares the orbital parameter. And if you integrate the orbit to the past, you notice that they go to the same, uh, or almost the same orbit, that means that they, they uh, are the product of a collision of, of, a, of another object <clears throat> in the past. Also, if you study the size distribution of asteroids, this corresponds basically to the same distribution uh, that you, of sizes that you obtain in the laboratory, breaking material with uh, high velocity collisions. And, and also, we, uh, what we see an internal structure of large asteroids of, uh, of a large fraction of asteroids is extremely porous. And this, is only, that's, this can only happen if, these, if there are reaccumulated <coughs> uh, objects. And also recently we were able to detect collisions or, or the effects of collisions, recent collision to an asteroid. This is asteroid Gila and the image show the dust ejected by the collision of a, a small per, per, uh, object on it uh, that happened in 2010. Here you can see a plot with the semi-major axis and the inclination. This is not exactly the semi-major axis, it's the proper semi-major axis and the proper inclination. I will not discuss about this because it takes too much. But you can see that there are concentrations of objects in the main belt. Those are the collision families. The first one was discovered in, 19, in 1918 by, the, by Irayama. And we have collision families like Pallas and Vesta with a very big object and a chunk of a small uh, asteroid so that moves in similar object. And if you, if you observe Vesta and Pallas, we can see the crater where, the, with this, uh, where this uh, small object came from. Uh, the, the, the collision leave very big craters in this, in this object. And uh, <clears throat> others, uh, other populations, like for example, the Temis family, that, uh, that uh, the, the size distribution goes from very small to very big in a continuous. So this come from a very big object that was completely destroyed in, in, in different size piece, pieces. The other, uh, one population that, in, that is very inter interesting for us is the near object population. Near objects are those objects that goes into the, the terrestrial planets and by definition, it's a smaller than with age. 1.3 AU, and a distance from Earth is smaller than, again, I don't know, that is the, the, the translator probably, uh, 0 0.3 AU, right? So it's not only that it came very close to the Earth, but also it, the orbit passed close by the Earth. 
<clears throat> but these objects are very in, in very unstable orbits. Uh, if you if you put an asteroid here in this region crossing around the orbital planets uh, earlier than than later, we cross uh, we pass by a, a, a terrestrial planet, and the and the gravity of of the planet will remove them from from the from the nearer region. So they last about 20, 30,000 years here, and then are ejected from this region. And, and, the, and the solar system is about 3.8 thousand million years. And, the, and, and, and we can see and, and how, how the collisions happen in, in the terrestrial planet region, studying the moon or studying Mercury. And, and, we, and, and the studies show that the rate of collisions is almost stable during the last 3,000 million years. So we need a mechanism in, that injects uh, objects continuously to the nearer region. And this mechanism uh, uh, comes, uh, it, it's been understood, understood by looking at the structure of the main belt. If you look at the structure of the main belt, and this is again a histogram, and this is a, a semi-major axis versus inclination, there are some regions that are depleted or uh, are forbidden for objects. Objects with this semi-major axis will be rapidly removed from the, from the main belt due to resonance with Jupiter and Saturn. These objects, for example, these ones, they make two orbits in exactly the same time that Jupiter do one. So they pass close by Jupiter every two rotations. The small, the small gravity effect that, that, that Jupiter does is uh, it will add uh, every time it passes, uh, it passes close by and rapidly will, uh, the, the, will be removed from there. And there are other kinds of, of, of resonance uh, that uh, I have no time to explain that happens particularly with, with Saturn that also remove. And you can see that the structure of, of the main belt is, is very clearly not uniform with holes in some part and, and population that remains uh, protected somehow in these regions, right? And what happens? When, when a collision happens in an asteroid close by the resonance, some of the chunks come close to the, to the resonance in a few thousand or a, a, mil, a million years or so. And when entered the resonance, the resonance ejected them from there and passed them to this region or outside, but mostly to this region and repopulate, continually replenish the nearer region that it is still, right? So as I say, the small collision of a, of a family, in particular, this family is close by here, it goes to the resonances, injected offset into the resonance and the resonance remove it from the main belt and uh, replenish the nearer region. And why are nearer, region inter uh, nearer asteroids interesting? As, as we say, the, the asteroids are interesting because they are very primitive and they, we can uh, learn a lot about how the material was at the beginning of the solar system. But in the case of NEOS, they have three main reasons of interest. The first one is that they can impact the Earth. And, uh, are potentially hazardous. Uh, uh, and uh, collision happens all the time with Earth since its formation. We can, in particular, we are very interested in this population, what we call the potentially, potentially, potentially hazardous asteroids, the PHAs. Those are asteroids with a diameter larger than 140 meters. Anything larger than 140 meters that hit the Earth at the velocities that the asteroids do will cause a global effect that will affect um, basically all our civilizations. If it is even larger, will cause an extinction, a global extinction, right? But, but anything larger than 100 meters will be uh, catastrophic for us humans. So they are very interested for, we are very interested in terms of planet, in planetary defense, uh, uh, be, uh, uh, to study NEOs. Also, because of science and technology, they are easily to attain. If we want to plan a mission, it's easier to go something that come closer than go to the main belt. That, that needs much more energy. 
to, to, to arrive there. So there are lots of missions that uh, were planned to, to study near objects. And then a lot of science can be done there. And also uh, 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 something that will happen in the, in the future, not, not too far, is that we will use the materials of the asteroids uh, to travel in the, in the solar system. The space exploration will need materials. Uh, for example, we'll need water. Uh, we, we, we need to, 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 <clears throat> to refill our water tanks to, for, because of tourism to survive. We need water if you have humans. And because water is, uh, can, be, uh, can be used as a, the fuel of, of rockets, right? You know, you have oxygen, hydrogen. The, uh, 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 if you combine them, you have an exogenic reaction and most of the, of, of the, uh, um, uh, of the motors of the, our rockets use this reaction to, to, to go to space. And in space, we can use this to move uh, our, our spacecraft. And also we can uh, use uh, cell for rare materials or building materials in space. So we, we, we can use asteroids as gas stations or to, to uh, find some materials that are of interest. So there will be an industry of asteroid mining in the future for sure. And the, the, the interest on near asteroids increased a lot in the 80s. Several surveys started to, to, to operate and actually, we know more than 20,000, we are close to 30,000 at this moment uh, of, near, of known near asteroids. Look at the amount of them that, uh, that are very dangerous for us. And, the, and the, uh, the, the killer one, the one that will, those that can, can produce <clears throat> um, uh, the, uh, a global, uh, uh, disaster that the, 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 uh, on life on Earth uh, are, are uh, this this group here. And notice that we are not discovering these objects anymore. We almost known all of them. Now the 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 aim is to know all of these ones, all of those larger than 140 meters. But we cannot think that those here are, uh, we don't worry about. No, no, we should worry about them. Has happened years ago. Again, Siberia. <laughs> but in a population. Be careful. Our, our gal, 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 uh, Gallic only is, uh, are only scared on, on the, what happened, what fall from sky. And this happens. This, this, uh, this uh, event is called a superboli. Uh, and retrieve some meteorites. And here is a mirror, it's meteorites uh, that, that fall uh, in uh, nearby Chelyabinsk, right? Uh, uh, what happened there it was a rocky object the, with the, uh, that it is a chunk of, a, on, of an Apollo asteroid of 10,000 tons uh, and with a diameter of about 17 meters hit the Earth at, the, at this velocity, 18 kilometers per second, and exploded between 15 and 25 uh, kilometers in altitude with a 500 kilotons intensity, an explosion much larger than the one of the <clears throat> nuclear explosion we, we have in, 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 in Japan in the, during the Second World War. Uh, the, the effects that we have uh, were very destructive, and, and, but not because of the, of the stones, not because of the meteorites that hit the, 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 the surface, because of the shockwave. The shockwave produced the destruction of uh, uh, a lot of a lot of things and and, uh, and affected a lot of people. Uh, and what we uh, have here is an ordinary chondrite. 
you can see it here, is a not very, very heavy material, as you can see with the conduits and, and things, uh, things like that. Right, that heated in a lake, the, the biggest part heated in a lake produces this hole in the lake, and also uh, produce a lot of destruction in, in the Chelyabin city with about 1,500 1, uh, people that needed medical assistance the, due to the event. And this helped us to understand the Tunguska effect, right? Now we know that the Tunguska was an, um, uh, an object between 50 and 80 kilometers in, diam in diameter, much larger than, than Chelyabinsk. Uh, that entered the atmosphere at a higher velocity and exploded at a lower elevation, right? Liberating between 10 and 30 megatons uh, of energy. Uh, and, and also we know that this can happen every 300 or 1000 years. It's not uh, as unusual, right? While events in Chile are being happened between uh, one or five times per century. And, and we know a lot of impacts on uh, impact craters on, on us. We have about 190 confirmed craters in the Earth's impact database. And let me say that this, uh, this means that are, those are in geological terms, recent collisions because our, our, our planet uh, has not only uh, two thirds of its of surface covered by water, but also the surface uh, suffer a lot of erosion. So uh, most of the craters are completely deleted with time. So we know only the, the more recent in, term, in geological term ones. And in particular, we know very well this one in, in, the, in the Gulf of Mexico, the Shiksulub crater. The Shiksulub crater was discovered in the late 70s by Camargo et al. And it's a 180 kilometer diameter <coughs> Uh, crater that could be even larger if, if we consider an, a, second, uh, a second ring uh, that can be uh, detected. Notice that it is basically in the, in, the, in the Gulf, so it's underwater. It was not easy to detect this structure, but mm, it was detected in the 70s, studying the structure of, of the, of the uh, mm, floor of the ocean and, and, and what happens in, 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 the, in, the, in the peninsula here. Uh, and there are a lot of minerals found that uh, clearly suggest the the, 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 that were produced by an impact, with tectites, impact quartz, and etc. This crater was uh, was formed 65 million years ago, yeah, at the end of the Cretaceous epoch, and uh, was linked to the extinction of the dinosaurs. The impact of, a, of an object larger than 10, 10 kilometers liberated uh, uh, a huge energy in the, in the atmosphere. And in 1982, Alvarez et al. proposed that the dinosaur would have become extinct by the impact of this uh, disaster. There are a lot of, of proofs on, on Earth uh, <clears throat> that, that, that uh, this happened. And, uh, and since then, the, this, uh, this is the more likely cause of the extinction of dinosaurs. An impact of, a, um, of an object that can have similar effects uh, uh, of, of uh, half a kilometer or one kilometer will have global effects on life. Uh, probably a produce a, a mass extinction, in particular human mass extinction. Okay, uh, uh, there are some studies of the impact rate just to show very rapidly. Uncelia Vinx event every 20 years a Tunguska event every 300 years, and a destructor of civilization, like the something larger than 140 uh, meters every 100,000 years. Okay, 100,000 is too much, it will not happen. Well, we don't know. What we know is that it will happen. Uh, the, 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 the question is not if it's gonna happen, the question is when it will happen. And are we, going to be ready for. And that is something that uh, we astronomers are trying to do, prepare for the, uh, <clears throat> uh, prepare a, de a planetary defense strategy. And for this, we try to know as much uh, near objects uh, as possible with survey programs to, to detect 
sur uh, survey program to follow up and study the diameter, composition, structure, etc. We are constantly uh, su uh, surveying the sky to try to detect when they come close by. And also we are doing several different study to determine what is gonna be the best st strategy to, to deflect the asteroid, or uh, in the case in particular of, of the very small ones, uh, to try to detect where and when it's gonna happen to, to plan a mitigation strategy like we have with uh, other, <laughs> other uh, catastrophes like uh, volcanoes and so on. Uh, a, a lot of work, uh, groups working in coordination with NASA, ESA and other space agencies to, uh, to prepare, <clears throat> the, prepare for study the near asteroids and also preparing joint missions for example, in the space exploration, there, there were missions to study two near asteroids recently, the, the asteroid Bennu by, with the OSIRIS-REx mission and, and, and Ryugu uh, by, by the JAXA uh, Hayabusa 2 mission. That, and those missions are very interesting because they took samples on the surface of the surface of the asteroid that uh, uh, in the case of, of Bennu are already at, on, uh, on, uh, on the labs uh, and uh, they are studying the, the material they retrieve from the asteroid. And in the case of, uh, uh, in the case of OSIRIS-REx, uh, Bennu, the, the, the sample is on, on its way to the Earth and it will, uh, they will arrive in 2023. We have, we have several hundred thousand grams, uh, several hundred grams of, of material collected from the surface of uh, Bennu. And there are, the, uh, actually, there is a mission planet, the two missions planet that uh, work, will work together uh, in a planetary defense uh, strategy. There's uh, they call it the AIDA collaboration and the asteroid impact and deflection assessment that, uh, that has two spacecraft, DART, that will hit the, the, the surface of, uh, the, of the satellite of, uh, of the asteroid Didymos. Didymos is a double satellite an object with a few hundred kilometers in diameter and a satellite with 100 kilometers in diameter. But this is about the size of we are uh, trying to, to, to protect the 140. And the idea is that DART will collide with the, with the asteroid, with the satellite. This, uh, and and the, this will change the orbital, the orbit of the satellite around, the, um, around Timidimos. Uh, the, the, the orbit of Dimorphos is gonna change, slightly change. And this, these changes will be measured from Earth, but in particular, uh, the ERA mission, this is an uh, ESA mission where, that will fly in 2023, will do a five-year rendezvous around the, around the system and will study or obtain all the details to be able to, 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 to uh, study how, how uh, with detailed effects of, of an impact of a mass we know with a velocity we know in an object that we, all, we don't know many details. So if, if we know the mass, the density, the shape and so on of, of Dimorphos, we should better understand uh, what are the effects of hitting it with, a, with, a, with an object. So this is, will be the first deflection mission of an asteroid in, uh, to, to protect ourselves. Carl <clears throat> uh, Sagan also talked about comets and I, have, I should have to move very rapidly. You know, comets are small objects, a small icy object. In the, in the 50s, in 1950, they, we almost known the, the basics of comets with a hypothesis of twelve people that the comet is a dirty icy ball. We, we have some uh, <clears throat> further studies on the internal structure, but, but basically a comet is a, is an icy ball, water ice, and some dust, and other, and other kind of uh, volatiles uh, that when come close to Earth in an, in an elongated orbit that we can come to Earth, Earth the, uh, the ice started to, the, the body warms, the ice sublimate, uh, the, in the sublimation, uh, the gas is ejected and, and uh, dry, uh, drive uh, dust uh, form, forming a an, an, an temporary atmosphere and a tail of, of dust and gas that it is pushed uh, in, the, in the direction contrary to the sun by the solar radiation and solar uh, light pressure. 
And it was in 1986 we confirmed this uh, hypothesis with the first image ever of a cometary nucleus by the ESA um, Giotto mission, obtained the, the first images of uh, comet uh, Halley. Since then, we have uh, several missions to comet. The last one, again, an ESA mission to the to Shurimov Gerasimenko, the Rosetta mission that provided unique information of the processes that happen and the structure and the materials and how a comet belongs and how a comet was formed in the outer part of the solar system by ice and dust. We, we know two kind of different kind of, uh, three different kind of comets here in, in, in this is a lo uh, logarithmic of this logarithm of the semi-major axis and the inclination again. And notice that uh, we have here three kinds of uh, three groups. The Halley type that moves in this, in, in this region, the long period ones with a very much longer and semi-major axis and longer than four, much, much longer than four. We'll cut the, the, the diagram here uh, just because of space. And, and notice that they also uh, are, uh, move in very different inclination. In fact, they can, can came from any, any inclination respect to the ecliptic plane. This is because they came from the Oort cloud, right? And the Oort cloud is an sphere outside the, in, in the outside region of the solar system, so they can came from wherever <coughs> the, the Oort cloud is. On the other hand, we have the, what we call the short period comets or the Jupiter family comet that are those, this group of comets here with uh, orbits uh, that uh, have only 20 years or less, but they, they are very low inclined. They are almost in the ecliptic plane. Right, and this this was very difficult to understand at the beginning because what we, we they, they know in the epoch of, of, of cosmos is that the comets came from the Oort cloud, this region around the sun, and when something happened, the, the, the sun moves and the Oort cloud moves, pass close by another star, or pass close by molecular clouds, or all, uh, 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 the, the, also the sun is not is not in the in the galactic plane is a little bit far from the galactic plane, so it crosses the galactic plane and the, the tidal force of the galactic plane affects all these tiny bodies in the, in the external part, making that some of them are ejected and some of them are injected to the terrestrial planet region. These are the long period comets, but how we can form something from a structure that, uh, that it is randomly distributed in, in inclination a group of comets that are concentrated at very low inclination. This is something that was not answered at this moment. Uh, uh, I will pass this because uh, I have no time. <clears throat> but this answer was done was uh, it also in the 80s, but not uh, was not very popular in the 90s by Julio Fernandez that worked in the Observatorio Astronomical Nacional in Madrid. Julio is, was my professor. Is from Uruguay and was in Madrid at the epoch he published this paper. With numerical uh, simulation, Fernandez shown that the Jupiter family comet are dispersed object from a region in uh, far from, from Neptune, that, what he called the Transneptunian belt, right? It's a ring region. So there are objects at low inclinations because they are in a ring that are, uh, uh, and the object removed from them, keep low inclinations and come to the, to the interior in, uh, in, in direct low inclined orbits. But the first transneptunian object was not discovered till 1992 by Juita and Liu. This was the object called 1992 QB1 and uh, the category of the object that are similar to, to, the, uh, to it are known as the QB1s. Right, and actually, we know more than three thousand objects in the trans in, in the transneptunian region. But was 1992 could be one the first one? No, the first one was Pluto and was discovered in 1930 by Clayton Bow. Actually, we know that the structure of the transneptunian belt is very similar to the structure of the asteroid main belt. But here we have again res uh, regions with uh, concentration of objects and and a forbidden region with, because of resonance, but in this case, a resonance not with Jupiter, Jupiter is too far, far, a resonance with the orbit of Neptune. 
and, and if the effect of Neptune and Uranus on uh, and the evolution, the movement of Neptune and Uranus in this region destroyed the original structure of, of icy bodies in this region and leave formed all the structure we know actually <clears throat> in, in this part of, of the solar system. And there we have very large objects, not only Pluto that is 2000 kilometer with its satellite charm, we have Eris of a similar size, Aumea, all, all of them discovered in 2005, Maki Maki. Uh, so at this point that we started to discuss uh, the nature of, of, uh, of Pluto, right? <clears throat> This is, uh, and, and, and in fact, we, we, we had in, in 2015, the first visit to a trans-Neptunian object, Pluto, and its satellite Charon, and the small satellite Hydra, Nix, Kerberos, and, and, and Styx. And then uh, New Horizon observed the, the second observed trans-Neptunian object, that is Arcot. Were those the, the first trans-Neptunian object visited by a spacecraft? I should say no. The first one is this, it's Titan. Titan is actually orbiting around uh, Neptune, but it is a captured trans-Neptunian object of a similar size of, of uh, Pluto. And in fact, it shares a lot of properties with the, with the, <clears throat> with the little Pluto. And, and uh, then then uh, makes sense uh, uh, what, what people started to, to discuss uh, when these objects were discovered it as if we have to maintain Pluto in, in the, uh, as a planet. And in, the, in this uh, view, the terrestrial planets, the giant planets, this is Neptune. And here you have Pluto. Pluto was strange since the beginning. While the, the, while the other planets are in almost circular orbits, Pluto moves in a very, very eccentric orbit. Not only very eccentric, also inclined respect to the orbits of the other eight planets, very inclined. Since the beginning, they discussed if Pluto was a planet. Since that is, it's discovery, people claim, some people claim that this was not a one, one planet. And actually, we know a lot of objects there, some of them of a, a similar size. And then uh, the conclusion is that whatever we consider Pluto, it's the, one of the largest member of this trans-Neptunian population with similar composition, similar orbits, and so on. And we have thousands of them, actually in the trans Neptunian Okay. Oh, oh, we want to move to the next, to the next, okay. Very rapidly, uh, we also discovered in the last time some objects that are in the asteroid belt that present activity like comets. Those are called, called the active asteroids. And, the, uh, and what they prove is that this, the, old, the, the, the separation between rocky and icy objects is not that clear. There are some objects in, with intermediate composition, in particular living in the outer part of the, the main belt. Um, and, we, the, and the expectation is that we will have a new era of discovery that is coming very soon. Uh, the LSST, the Vera Rubin Observatory will produce will observe more than 5 million new small solar system objects in, in the first year of operation, right? This will be a, 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 a revolution like, uh, like the, 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 the other surveys represented in the 90s, uh, beginning of this, uh, of this century and the beginning of this century. And will probably surprise us with new population of objects maybe objects be beyond the, the trans Neptunian belt uh, we already know no. And objects, in, <clears throat> uh, strange objects in, in, in the region, more interstellar objects, more objects uh, in the asteroid belt that show activity. I mean, we expect a lot of information from this, uh, this uh, survey telescope that is gonna be installed in Chile and will start to operate uh, in, uh, in 2023. Also, we will have the JMWST, the James Webb Space Telescope that will allow us to study the composition of small bodies with an unprecedented accuracy. So I expect a lot of new discoveries in terms of the presence of organics and complex organics in, in some uh, asteroids and, uh, and icy bodies. 
And also we are, uh, we, we will have soon a lot of information uh, on, on a spectroscopy of more than 100,000 asteroids from Gaia that will start to be published uh, next year. So uh, next year, next, uh, the following years, probably the next uh, decade will, uh, will be also uh, an exciting time for solar system research. And that's it. Thanks uh, for your attentions. And uh, I'm open for questions.